I'm here with Dr. Lovell, one of my colleagues within the Providence system. And, and Dr. Lovell is one of the opinion leaders and thought leaders within our orthopedic system, and he's visiting us down from the Northwest. Um, Tim, tell us a little bit about your practice and um, what kind of things you're doing right now. So I'm in Spokane, Washington. I have a hip and knee only, or hip and knee replacement only practice. I've been there for over 27 years. Um, and I've been doing uh, the Mako partial knee for several years, and we've been doing the Mako total knee since November 2016. Um, and I, my story with Mako was, uh, I don't know if you know, but initially before Stryker bought Mako, the way Mako marketed it is they would come around and talk to the hospital CEOs. Mm. And they would market to the hospital CEO and then the CEOs would come to the orthopedic surgeons and say, hey, what do you think? And 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 because uh, they would get fired up about it. And so that happened in Spokane. And the, the, they, the administration came to me and I said, it's a gimmick. Don't get it. Right. I shot from the hip. That was in 2014, 2015? Oh, no, even sooner than that. Okay. So fortunately, my senior partner at the time did what I should have done. Mm -hmm. And he invested about 18 months investigating it and said, no, this is, a good, this is a good thing, technology, we should get it. And we got it. And then I spent about 18 months investigating it and I had to eat crow. I had to say, you know what, I was wrong. This, this is amazing. And in my career time in orthopedics over 27 years, I think this is one of the single biggest improvements I've seen in joint replacements. Oh, well, you got to unpack that. So you use the word amazing and the single biggest. <laughs> Why is it amazing? And then we'll get, why do you think it's so, why is it amazing to you? Well, uh, several reasons. One, because of the patient-specific CT scan, I can customize my plan for every single patient. And I do not believe that every total knee should be done the exact same way in every patient because we're all different. Everybody's anatomy is subtly different. And this allows me to customize my plan for every single patient, number one. Number two, it allows me to do the surgery virtually, and this is supposed to be a computer screen, mm -hmm. but it allows me to do the surgery virtually before I ever make any saw cuts if I want to, and I can do the surgery and get the plan just right. Then the robotic arm helps me carry out the plan. Now, yeah, okay, so the robotic arm makes very perfect saw cuts, and that's really, but that's really cool, but to me, the, the best part of it is I can do the surgery virtually until it's just right right for every individual patient and the plan you know how we we have our preoperative plan and it's based on the epicondylar axis um, and, and we have a, it I have never done just the preoperative plan because of our ability to assess ligamentous balance throughout the range of motion during the planning stage during the actual surgery I can alter the plan to make that knee balance just right for that individual patient. To me, that's, that's a big deal. Now, before you came to this understanding, you, you thought it might be a gimmick. Maybe you thought that the instruments that you had previously been using for 25 years were more than sufficient to do the surgery in the way you wanted? Well, so I did, I did normal manual instrumentation, and then about 10 years before I started doing the MAKO, I started using full meal deal computer navigation. Okay, so this, you actually had made a transition to technology even 10 years ago. Correct. Well, and then now that was 13 years ago. Okay. But so I, I believed that the technology was going to allow us to do better, and with computer navigation, I could also allow, it allowed me to do customization of my plan intraoperatively, but it wasn't to the, to the level of detail mm -hmm. um, or accuracy that the robot is. And I think it's because of the patient-specific CT scan. Okay, so the CT scan sounds like it's a key part of the process in your hands. Well, right now, we have to have a CT scan to do MAKO, but because it's so, it has provides so much detailed information, I think it allows better accuracy and, and therefore better planning for that individual patient because it's their CT scan. It's not a generic model of the knee. It's their knee. You mentioned a few times that this allows you to do it just right. Mm -hmm. and. And that sounds very exciting. Do you see that that translates 
into the surgical result or the patient outcome is is being is doing something just right something that you notice or is it something that your patients notice I think, or is it both I think it's both so you know as a surgeon what we do is we 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 make our saw cuts we put in the trial components and we what's the first thing we do we feel the knee through a range of motion right that's the first thing we do because we're feeling for the balance and and from the first surgery I could feel a difference in how these knees felt in terms of their stability throughout range of motion. I could feel a so difference. Tell me what that means. You feel a difference. Does it feel more stable? Does it feels it more feel, stable. It feels better to you? It feels Does better it feel to more me. natural to you? It, it feels uh, it's a smoother, more natural motion that is more stable throughout the range of motion. Okay. Um, and I think that's probably a combination of you you have the perfect plan you have the ideal plan that you you came up with during the surgery based on their ligaments and how they were balanced but also um, because of the haptics the saw blade only goes where it's supposed to go and, and I, I don't know if that's part of it but I wonder if if we're and it's very common for example when you do the tibial cut with the, the robot you'll see a paper thin layer of cortex mm -hmm. sometimes do you know what I mean right right and I wonder if that's one of the reasons that with a regular saw blade and, and no haptics that we may be getting some micro perforations of the capsule around the rest of the knee I think you're right we go beyond that border yeah, yeah. just because it's too hard for us to discern even with our eyes and our fingers and our tactile sensations uh, and I think that's one of the reasons that this is better and then have you seen that improvement in your planning and the improvement in the way you feel a knee translate into any difference in your patient? Yes. Um, and both my PA and I, who see people at different times in follow-up, just we both feel that, that we're noticing patients seem to get their motion easier. Mm -hmm. They seem to have less pain. We have found in our practice a shorter length of stay. And all those things have been reported by other people. Yeah, but also within orthopedics, especially when surgeons get together, we, we talk about the improvements that we see in our own outcomes. Right. Shorter length of stay, less blood loss. But ultimately it comes down to how the patient feels about the operation that they right. had. Right. Do you hear any differences from your patients since you've transitioned to that? Do they, do they just know they had a knee replacement? Are they aware of any differences? The, again, the, the part of this is, is the reason I'm hesitating a little bit is, is this is my anecdotal experience. Mm -hmm. And so I always hesitate when it's my anecdotal experience. But my experience has been that, that patients come in, they just seem to re, be rehabbing faster. They're, at a, they're further along in the game than they were the other way I was doing it. So they're, they're rehabbing faster. We've talked about the less pain. Um, and they seem to be doing more. When I, when I see people come in for their longer term follow-ups, they seem to be doing more than the typical total knee would 20 years ago. And I wonder if that's because they have, they have enhanced stability. Their stability feels better not only to me intraoperatively, but it feels better to them postoperatively. Yeah, I see. You know, if there's, if there's such improvement on the front end and there's such improvement theoretically for you and such improvement for patients in the, in the short run in terms of recovery and potentially in the long run, why are we not seeing more robotic knee replacements among our colleagues? Several reasons. One, I think, is the cost of, of the initial capital outlay for the equipment. What, is that, what does that mean for patients? Well, for the patients, they are blinded to that. They don't see that because they're not participating in, in that cost necessarily. Um, but the, the hospital systems have, in my, my clear, clearly, my experience has been the hospital systems are reluctant to spend the money to get the robot. Okay, this is an additional cost that the hospital would have to bear on behalf of the patients. At this time, and yes. These are not small costs. These, these are, are one, two million, three dollar costs within hospital budgets that they just don't have. Correct. Yeah. And so I think that's one of the biggest Im impediments right now is the surgeons are getting pushback from the hospital systems saying we don't want to 
spend that capital. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is, is there are people who have not seen the technology and who are, are dismissing it out of hand. They're just, there's... Uh, surgeons, patients? Uh, surgeons. Hospitals? For, for example, there's uh, one surgeon who's a good guy, great guy, but he calls it FACO. And, and, and I know that someone who says that has actually never seen it in use. Because once you see it in use, it blows your mind, the amount of information you get and how it allows you to make that patient better. But Tim, you fully can empathize because you mentioned when you were first encountered this, you thought this was a gimmick. Right. And if you had the, the pun of FACO, you might have used the same word. Right. right. Why do you think that's... Why do you think that is often the patient's first reaction or the, the surgeon's first reaction? Because frankly, I had the same reaction when I first came across this. I said, my knees are just fine. Right. Uh, I do them just, I don't need a computer to enhance the result I am already getting. Right. Well, and I, part of it is I think you and I are driven to try to get better. I do not do a single thing. Not, I do not do one thing right now the way I was trained to do it mm -hmm. in, in terms of the surgical approach for hips right. or knees, right. in terms of the implants in terms of how I try to balance in the intraoperative, I do not do a single thing the way I was trained to do it. And it's because we're always trying to get better at every single thing we do. And finally, we have a tool that gives us true digital yeah. feedback on how we're doing. It's not, well, I think this is two millimeters is okay. I've got actual numbers right. that tell me. Right. It changed it from feel and estimates and very vague ideas of what good is into something extremely quantifiable and therefore re reproducible. Exactly. And this is so, in teaching this stuff for many years, the number one question everybody always has when, whenever we're teaching any knee course, how do I balance the knee? Yeah. And why do they have that question? Because it's a feel thing. How you, for, for decades, how we balanced the knee was based on feel. Well, it takes a lot of time and experience and mm -hmm. trial and error to develop that feel. Mm -hmm. The robot allows you to not have to base it on feel, you base it on numbers, mm -hmm. on actual reproducible numbers. Everybody can balance numbers, everybody can. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to speak with you specifically because you've not only gone through this journey, journey, you are now in a position where you actually teach this to others seeking the information. I think the other interesting thing is, is that when you said that you no longer do things the same way, you and I had the privilege of training at the same place. Yep. You were there 10 years before me back in 91 and I finished in 2001. Yep. And we were trained among the finest. Yep. Um, it was a great place. Yeah, but but so much has evolved since then that we're no longer doing what we used to do 10, 20, 30 years ago. Correct. And you can't be. You can't be. Right? Things have to change, and we have a responsibility to leverage whatever technological advances helps us do a better job. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope I never keep doing things the same way. I, I, I hope I'm always learning, always getting better. Yeah, I agree. Nick, do you have questions for us? Yeah, Dr. Lovell's got to get going, so maybe just a couple questions. How do you explain this to patients, Dr. Lovell, when they may be asked, what's the deal with this robotic knee? How do you explain it to patients? So I actually am pretty low key in, in how I talk to them about it. I tell them that it's, because um, I've been doing computer navigation for so long, I tell them about computer navigation and I tell them to make a robot is the next step in evolution and making that process better because of the patient specific CT scan and that it allows me to do essentially a custom fit. And I don't mean in terms of not only how the components fit, but also the balance of their knee. Um, and if they want more detail, then I go into a lot more detail with them. But it, it, it's, it varies from person to person how much they want to know. If you had a patient that you previously did a manual knee on, let's say five, 10 years ago, that came back to your practice, that you were now gonna do a robotic knee on, what would you articulate to that patient that they could expect as far as differences in the recovery process? Yeah, and before you answer that, Tim, can you rephrase the question so when it comes on, you can rephrase and then answer it? So he asked a question. 
but you can rephrase the question and then answer it. Yeah, so just basically repeat the question that I asked okay. in your own way and then go into the answer. So, so um, if I have a patient who 10 years ago had a, a total knee done with manual instrumentation and now has had a robotic total knee, um, what we're noticing is what we talked about earlier, that they seem to have less pain a faster and easier rehab and a shorter length of stay. And that's been reproduced in, in several studies now. Um, the other thing that I'm noticing is, as we mentioned earlier, that they, they're they happier with their knee. They, they, they feel as if their knee is, is functioning better for them. Um, and our goal as surgeons is to give somebody a knee that they forget they've had replaced, right? That's our ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. we, we would, I'd love to have somebody come in and say, I can't remember which one was replaced. It feels so good. And we have really struggled to do that with manual instrumentation. I think this is going to get us closer to that, to the ability to do that for someone.